What if one man's actions were indirectly responsible for the world you grew up in? What if, without him, our culture would be radically different? What if seven of the ten Disney princesses didn't exist? In the late 70s, Lisberger Animation began working on a film about an electronic warrior named Tron. Soon, Disney got on board and the movie began taking shape. It would feature Lisberger's signature backlit animation, as well as something very revolutionary at the time, 3D computer animation. Many were reluctant to get behind the film. They even had trouble recruiting an actor for the title character, Tron. Originally, Bruce Boxleitner turned down the role. I said, ugh. No, man, this is, I don't even know what this is. What is this? But it was Jeff Bridges who changed his mind. And Jeff Bridges had signed on. And I said, my God, really? Okay, I'll do it. It's possible, without Bridges, Tron may have never made it. I thank God that we got Jeff Bridges and the project sounded far out to him and he just jumped into it. A modest success, the movie was destined to remain a cult classic, but it did prove one thing. The viability of large-scale computer animation in movies. This got the attention of one traditional animator at Disney, John Lasseter. For me, this was some of the very first computer animation I had ever seen, and it was so exciting. The Seeing the enormous potential of computer graphics, he jumped at the chance to use them. Working with Magi Synthavision, one of the animation studios from Tron, Lasseter put together a test of where the wild things are, with computer animated backgrounds behind traditionally animated characters. From there, a team within Disney began working on a movie using this combined style. In his haste to integrate CGI, Lasseter angered some of the older Disney leaders. When he pitched the idea for The Brave Little Toaster, not only was the project canceled, but Lasseter was fired. The Brave Little Toaster would later be revived as a traditional 2D film. Thanks inadvertently to a couple of light cycles, John Lasseter was now unemployed. Long story short, he found a job at Lucasfilm Computer Graphics Group and did character design for the adventures of Andre and Wally B. When George Lucas sold the division to Steve Jobs, it became Pixar, with Lasseter as executive producer. Now, before Pixar became famous for all their own films, they were famous for something else. The Pixar image computer had the power to do high-quality image processing, a rare feat in the 80s. While the company struggled to sell the expensive device to hospitals for 3D medical imaging, Walt Disney saw another use for the computer. Working with Pixar, they developed the Computer Animation Production System, or CAPS, CAPS digitized the laborious ink and paint process of animation and is directly responsible for the so-called Disney Renaissance of the 90s. Without CAPS, films like Pocahontas, Mulan, Hercules, and other award-winning hand-drawn features would not exist. CAPS also allowed animators to integrate CGI alongside traditional animation, just like John Lasseter did so many years ago. Perhaps the greatest example of this is the ballroom scene in Beauty and the Beast where the couple dances as the camera majestically pans and moves in ways only capable with computer animation. It was during this time Disney produced The Lion King, which still stands as the highest grossing hand-drawn film of all time. Children and adults alike would be denied the fun of singing Hakuna Matata or experiencing the terror of Scar and Simba's final fight. Aside from that, Caps was used to create four whole Disney princess movies, as well as the end scene in The Little Mermaid. And even though subsequent films used newer software, this era was the true birth of Disney princess culture. Imagine if we were limited only to Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, and Ariel. But Caps isn't the only thing we would have missed out on. Remember John Lasseter? I mean, without Tron, there would be no Toy Story. Ominous words indeed. He's credited as either director or producer of every movie Pixar has ever made. Had it not been for his exposure to light cycles, none of those films would exist either. Where would our world be? Would the names Sully, Mater, and Wall-E hold no meaning? Would DreamWorks never rise to meet the Pixar challenge, leaving us without Shrek and all its sequels? Would there be no Kung Fu Panda? Would live action movies be free of the CGI that so many critics look down on? Would Michael Bay have to make real movies again? We may never know. One thing is certain, all these culture-defining moments build upon each other. Each was part of a longer chain reaction. That reaction built the world of today. And that world was created by one man who chose to act in Tron. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man.